I think that there is at least one commonality in how Russia, the EU see what might be framed as a security order or security disorder. In Europe, uh, the commonality is about them, them both being unsatisfied with that. And Russia, f for at least a couple, well, m for longer than a decade, has been signaling that it was unsatisfied with how the things played out in terms of the order, security order, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And we know this argument that Russia thinks that its attempts to join the Western world and become an equal in that world order, in that security order, uh, failed because uh, no one in the West wanted to accept Russia. At the same time, we, we, we now see the EU, which is, well, quite perplexed by what happened in and around Ukraine and what implications it has had on the security in Europe at large and more specifically in Eastern Europe. So this is the, the difference, but at the same time, it's the commonality. Well, I don't want to dr dramatize, but I think in general terms for the in-between states, this whole situation means that they have become hostages. And it's pretty much a classical situation in international relations when you have bigger powers or geopolitical centers of attraction fighting each other or exerting their competing powers. And then those smaller states which stand in between are sort of uh, the victims because they are the ones those powers address and well, sometimes of an attack, and they have to maneuver in this situation. But we still need to add a qualification. When you look at the in-between states, they are different in terms of how they view their own uh, strategic security. You find Belarus, which clearly realizes that the only way for it to strengthen its own sovereignty and security, for that matter, is to somehow make sure that this geopolitical confrontation subsides and that Belarus can somehow serve as a bridge which unites the two rather than uh, a factor which disunites them. But then when you look at Ukraine, they see their own future as part of the Western civilization, outright. And in this particular respect, they are even ready to go as far as to provoke additional tensions between the two. And like, again, for Belarus, where I come from, this is also a huge problem because we find ourselves uh, in the center of you know, a growing uh, security dilemma. Well, I think what we've been working on in terms of uh, Belarusian expert community at least is something we tentatively call situational neutrality, where we're trying to see how we can remain in the military political alliance with the Russians, both for our own security, but also to make sure that some confidence building is there on the Russian side, but at the same time try to be situationally neutral on the regional confrontation so that it offer also security and confidence, confidence building measures to Ukraine, to Poland, to the Baltic states and to, to the West in, in a more broader sense. And I think Belarus is quite well placed for that purpose, not only because it has already provided the neutral venue and it has declared its will to go this way, but also because we already have bilateral CSBMs, confidence security building measures, with which one of our neighbors, including NATO neighbors. And in the situation when the security escalation is going on, this might be the only way to make sure that it does not result in a kinetic collision in our part of the world. Well, it's, I think one of those cases where we want to raise a glass and there are a lot of things we, we can celebrate as the 10th anniversary has approached us. Uh, for example, it has facilitated additional uh, cooperation, exchange and context. For some countries in the Eastern Partnership, it has paved way for uh, things like association agreement for uh, visa liberalization or even uh, visa-free regimes. And certainly for people on the ground, this is extremely important. Uh, at the same time, the results have been uneven, and for Belarus, which is actually primarily interested in this initiative, I would say even more than any other country, because Belarus remains uh, the single country in the region without a political agreement with the EU. So for many years, the fact that Belarus was part of the Eastern Partnership facilitated a normal, legitimate communication channel between Minsk and Brussels, which was important, but at the same time, uh, some of the results are, of course, are not yet there because Belarus 
in contrast to Ukraine and Georgia, does not express the strong will not only to become part of the EU, but also to go as far as to conclude an association agreement, for example. And that's why I, I think there was a lot of unsatisfactory uh, moods in Minsk that even despite a lot of progress in communication, uh, certain simple things like, for instance, Lithuania's position on the Belarusian nuclear power plant simply blocks any progress on the level of agreements, primarily the partnership priorities agreement. But at the same time, there is also this understanding that we need to go on with this and uh, in the best possible of worlds, we need to achieve progress in the Eastern Partnership, but also, again, to make sure that it serves original security and it somehow offers a uniting agenda rather than uh, a divisive one, which, again, in the case of Belarus, is potentially very risky if it turns out the opposite.